Let's talk about Synology NAS in the year 2022 and also the fact that my Synology NAS, the 1618 Plus that you may have seen in a few of the videos, is starting to fill up already. And what is going to be my next move in terms of expanding my storage on the NAS that I have? Let's find out together. This is Artist Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. If you haven't followed the channel, you may have seen a few of my Synology NAS videos about the 1618 Plus that I've just added into my workflow. I have been using Synology NAS for probably about a good decade now, so I really believe in a product. I made a video talking about SHR, how I think the Synology Hybrid RAID, that is SHR, that allows you to combine multiple different sizes of hard drive to create a RAID array is a really great way to set up a RAID for a creative file storage system. And also it makes it very easy down the road to expand the RAID array rather than breaking everything all down. You can put in, take one drive out, put in a larger drive and expand everything in. It makes it super simple. They also have the option for 10 gigabit networking, which makes a lot of sense if you're transferring a lot of footage and everything. It makes it super fast. Upgrading RAM on Synology, NAS for instance, also putting SSD cache in there. A lot of things that I have talked about. So I'm at the dilemma because the NAS that I feature in that video, the 1618 Plus that is populated with six Seagate Exos drive, 14 terabyte, that is the enterprise SSD that Seagate's made. And Amazingly enough, that is one of the best drive the Seagates have. It has a much longer mean time between failure compared to even the Iron Wolf Pro. And it's also priced lower. So most of the time when I'm configuring a system like that for myself or for my client, I say go for the Exos. Why not, right? Because it's a much better drive at a lower price. I mean, win-win. Anyway, that NAS system is filling up. So I'm now looking at solution and exploring different options to expand my storage. There are probably about three different ways I'm going to go about that. And two of the ways involves Synology directly, meaning that I'm either going to get an expansion unit or get a new NAS unit in general. And looking at their product lineup, I have a few thoughts about it and I'd like to share that with you. So starting out, you may say that, Art, if your NAS is filling up, why don't you get a really large hard drive and move some of the files you're not using right now or not using all the time onto that hard drive? The problem is that majority of those files are the video files that I'm using for my YouTube and also for my other client. And I'm constantly referencing back on those files. It will make it such a pain for me to like go in and segregate them out. Or if I need to access those files, I have to plug in hard drive to my system. That was the previous system that I have used where I have plugged in multiple drive into my Mac and I don't want to do that anymore. I'm done with those days. I like having just one single system through an Ethernet cable and I can get really high speed transfer from there. So I really want to maintain this analogy NAS. And yes, I would use those drive externally to do a backup, but I don't want to have it be one of the only source or the two sources that I have and I have to plug those in to access the file. So, that solution right now, it's kind of out of the question. So the other two that I have left is to look at Synology product. So for going to hard drive, what I have to look at right now is the Synology solution either for expansion unit or for a brand new NAS in general. There are a few things that really give me pause about the expansion unit and I'm about to share that with you. Number one, let's talk quickly about Synology naming system. They do make something easy a lot of times, which I really like. The naming is one of them. For example, I have the 1618 Plus. The Plus denotes that I have a NAS with a more powerful CPU on the inside, which is great, more mainstream model. The last two digits denotes generally the year that that NAS was released, and the first one or two digits denotes the number of bays that you can have on your system. Mine is a 16, meaning that I can have 16 bays total, and because I only have six bays internally, I can put two expansion units on my system and expand the total out to 10 bays. Now, when you set up an expansion unit, you should set it up as a separate storage pool to avoid any problems in the long run. That is definitely the first thing you want to do. But a couple of things about their expansion unit. And the one that I'm referring to is the DX517. This is the one that we're looking at right now. The problem that I have with these expansion units, especially on any of the disk station, that has eight bays or less is that they use eSATA with port multiplier technology to connect the main unit to this expansion unit. And 
In my experience, I have one right now that is running on the previous generation 51 or DX513, and that has a lot of problems down the road, meaning that some of the drive got kicked out of the array, the eSATA has to reset itself. There are a lot of things that happen with the expansion unit that just give me cringe and really give me pause because I don't want to wake up one morning or one afternoon that expansion bay is no longer communicating properly and it's not really showing it on my system. That happens a lot of times. And what I have to do then is shut down the NAS, restart it to which it will tell me, hey, one of the drive is not functioning properly. So I have to pull out the drive, put it back in, have the whole system rebuild itself, fingers crossed. Hopefully that everything is going to restore properly before the one of the drive in the expansion unit get kicked out again. That happens to me before. The other thing about the expansion unit is that the firmware of a drive that you use in there has to be one that is compatible with Synology and it's much more finicky because of the eSATA connection compared to a NAS system with the built-in drive. So these are some of the things that gives me pause about the expansion unit. Now the other thing too is I also mentioned already that this is using eSATA with port multiplier and the maximum speed you're really going to get from eSATA right now is around 6 gigabits per second. With that, I'm really going to be transferring my files at 500 to 600 megabytes per second. I have 10 gigabit Ethernet connection on my network. When I'm transferring the file between my computer and the main NAS, the 1618 plus, I'm already exceeding that number. So I really don't want to kind of go back in a way to a slower system. And I really wish that Synology have done a few things with their expansion. Number one, use a proprietary connection. They're going proprietary on a lot of things on the drive, on the NVMe SSD. Might as well just create a proprietary connection for the expansion. Unit. I'd be more than happy to pay for an expansion unit that is more reliable. It doesn't kick the drive out of the system that often and also has a greater speed than an eSATA connection. So I don't want to really explore this option right now, although if I have to, I may go this route. But there are a few other things I'm looking at because my NAS have six bay, there are some possibility to upgrade to a larger NAS. So for instance, based on the one that I have right now, which is the 1618 plus, and they don't even have that anymore. Right now they have just the 1621 plus. Upgrading that would be the 1821 plus. And then we have two of the unit that is a 12 bay, which is very interesting. One of them is running on the previous processor that I use in the NAS, which is the Intel Atom. And the newer one is running on the AMD Ryzen. I kind of want the AMD Ryzen because, hey, if I'm going to buy one today, I want to get like the latest one, right? So let's talk about the current 12 bay unit and also the previous generation 12 bay unit in comparison to, for example, the 1821 Plus to keep everything simple. Starting out with the NVMe SSD slot. On both of these 12 bay units, they don't have the slot built into the NAS itself. On the DS1821 Plus, there is two slot built in and you can utilize that immediately and right away. By the way, if you're doing a read-only cache, I release a video about that, how when I released a video, I was using a two terabyte NVMe SSD. You're not really gonna utilize that two terabyte even just in like RAID 0 or RAID 1 or whatever that may be. So what I have done is downgrade that to a 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD running it in parallel. So they're all in RAID 0. It's a read-only cache, big deal. It's pulling that together. So it's creating one terabyte storage pool instead of like four. I'm not really using it that much. And I find that most people are not going to use it quite as much either. So just something I want to give you a side note on. Okay, back to talking about these bays. So on the 8 bay unit is built in, but it's not built in on the 12 bay unit. So what I have to do then is use the card that Synology have, which I already own this card, which is the E10M20T1. This is the card that has 10 gigabit 10 base T Ethernet. So that's what you're seeing on the screen right now. And it also has the NVMe, so you can put two card slot on the inside. And there are a lot of limitations on here regarding the compatible NVMe. Essentially, only Synology NVMe drive are compatible because if you don't, you may run into data loss or they're not going to support your system. Yes, we're getting into that territory already. But yes, I have run Samsung NVMe SSD in there and they have worked just fine. Again, I'm not telling you to go against their recommendation, but I'm telling you what I have used in my system and it works. 
So for instance, if I have gone to the 12 base system, I still have to use that card, which is why can't you just have that built in, especially on a newer one? Like how much more would it cost you to really build in the two NVMe SSD slot inside the machine so I don't have to use that very specific card? Now, the other thing I'm also going to point out is that none of the Plus model right now comes with 10 gigabit Ethernet access. The only one that has that standard are the XS series at the very top or the XS Plus. These are the Pro series that uses a Xenon processor. They're much more expensive. They're much better for virtualization. I don't need that power. I just need file storage and also to run some application software or have it run something in the background. So I don't really have a need for that. But I can't get 10 gigabit Ethernet access native on these machine. And at one point though, one of the models, the 1817, had 10 gigabit Ethernet access. In fact, dual 10 gigabit. But CPU on that machine was really a weak one that it was just really used for a storage system. So not quite the compromise I was going for. And you can't even find that system on their website anymore. So two of those things doesn't happen to me already. Now there's one more thing in researching this 2422 plus I found out and that is the compatible drive. And not a lot of people talk about this. There's only a few channels that have mentioned this and also some reviews online that you can find. But essentially, if you go to the 2422 plus, which is the one that I was eyeing, the fact that I have to use an expansion card to get 10 gigabit Ethernet and also NVMe SSE caching is disappointing. But worse yet, if you click on compatibility, on this 12 bay unit, if you take a look at it right now, the drives that are compatible for the DS2422 Plus is very small. And majority of the drive are Synology drive. And by the way, if you don't know about the Synology drive and also NVMe SSD and including their SSDs, are majority of them are manufactured by Toshiba and they run on Synology firmware, obviously. But the fact that you can't put any other drive in there is rather disappointing. This, for instance, compared to the previous generation, the DS2419 Plus, the second generation or Plus 2, you can see that the drive list goes on forever. And this is something more of what I would expecting, like the Exos drive are really supported. Same thing for the DS1821 Plus. You can see that many of the Exos drive and everything are supported on here, the Iron Wolf, the Exos, all these other ones are being supported in the system. So, you may ask, what's the big deal with running a drive that's not compatible or listed on their website? Well, essentially, if you or if I take all my Exos drive from my 1618 Plus and put it into this new DS2422 Plus, the system will run just fine. It will initialize, it will bring everything over, but it won't give me my drive help information. It won't give me any telemetry data about the drive whatsoever. So literally I'm flying with at least six drive blind on the system that could take up to 12. That's not ideal. I'm not really sure why they have decided to do this. A couple of speculation that I have is that you're using a 12 bay unit. So they want to make sure that all these 12 bays are uh, similar drive. They're running on a very similar firmware and Having Synology run the drive themselves, it can be much easier for firmware upgrade and making sure the firmwares are on the same version. It can automatically take one drive out of the array, upgrade the firmware, and just literally put a drive back into your array. And it does it seamlessly because it all built into each other. And that makes sense because if you have gone through a firmware update process on a hard drive, especially one in the NAS, it is a nerve wracking process, number one. And sometimes the firmware update process most of the time does not wipe the drive, but sometimes it does. So when you have a 12 base system like this, if I have to update one drive at a time, normally what I would do is pull out one drive, do a firmware update, plug it back in and make sure the systems are run, turn the NAS back on, shut it down again and continue to go through this process. And it is a time consuming process to ensure that the data integrity is there at every single step of the way. Having their drive running in synchronous and being able to automatically update the firmware, I could see that having this many drive makes sense, but I'm sorry, at the end of the day, this is still the 2422 plus. This is not the XS series. So I don't really like the limitation and I would love to get this modern ass and I was about to almost buy it, but I didn't because of that reason. It is a big disappointment for me. So right now, when I'm really looking at this whole thing, 
My compromise at this point in time is to probably look at not so much the DS2419 plus two. I don't really want to get that anymore. What I'm really kind of looking at right now is the DS1821 plus and get two more Seagate Exos 14 terabyte drive, put them in there, expand the array because I'm using SHR and just kind of go with that. But I'm hoping a few things doesn't happen that what they're doing with the 2422 plus it's not a trend that goes forward into all the other plus line, for instance, where they're now really limiting you and saying that you can only use Synology Drive because that would be a big hindrance on the system. And as much as I find their SHR system extremely useful, I will automatically go in and look for another NAS manufacturer because I don't like to be locked in. I want to be able to choose the drive that I want to use in my system and I'm hoping that this is only a one off with this unit or a unit that has much more bays and that they don't do this to like the eight or the six bay unit or anything below because that would definitely be a pain. So yeah, that's my thought on the whole process of Synology and running into some of the limitations. And I just feel like I want to share with you my thoughts about this. And also, so you're aware as well what Synology is doing, because I think that is important because I feel that these type of behaviors, as good as the intention may be, at any point of time, if you look at this, it's really anti-consumer, it's really anti-us creative people being able to get a system and put in any drive that you want in there or mix and match any type of drive. At this point in time, like, yes, you can mix and match any type of drive as long as there's Synology or one supported Western Digital. And I don't think that's okay. So going forward, I'm sincerely hoping that this is not going to be the trend that we're going to see because I have seen many companies that are starting out and they're trying to build a market base. They're really friendly to any type of accessories you can plug in. Take Atomos, for example. I just recently made a video about their product and how their recent firmware is now capping some of the code deck that automatically came with the device itself. And now you have to even go in and activate those codecs. This is something very similar and I hope this trend does not continue. So if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Give this video a like, subscribe and hit on the bell if you're new. And remember, in art we trust.